need a, another five next round. So that, yeah, I'll need him again in the uh, next round. Yeah, same. Thank you. back here. Welcome back, media. A reminder, please turn off those cell phones. We thank you. Flash photography is strictly prohibited. And prior to asking the question once again, identify yourself and your media affiliation. All these news conferences are being recorded here on site by Hammond Communications and provided via the NCA Digital Hub site. All news conferences are provided via live stream.
Iowa coach and student athletes are en route. Down there. We have the wrong name I'll tag up here. Wait a second. Maybe, does anybody know? Maybe Our player was changed. Uh, sure. They had Kate Martin up here instead of Gabby, but do you want Gabby? They'll bring it, they'll bring it up. right now, everybody. We'll be right back after this. Gabby, stay here. Hold on, Gabby, she's coming. Gabby, stay here. Gabby, she's coming. Gabby Marshall's up here. Okay. She had a heck of a game. She ought to be up here. So we have Caitlin, Sydney, and Gabby. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Gabby Marshall. Marshall, right? <laughs> Hello. We are joined by Iowa coach Lisa Luter with Sydney Affolder, Caitlin Clark, and Gabby Marshall. And we will start with opening comments from the coach. I'm just really proud of the way that we played today. I thought um, we played really good team basketball. We got everybody involved. Um, we had five people in double figures, did a great job on the boards. Um, you know, they only got four offensive rebounds in the whole second half. Um, you know, I just, I'm really proud of my group. And, you know, Caitlin comes out and has 15 assists, only two turnovers. Um, I thought that there were so many people that played well in this game. Sita Folter has the highest plus minus of anybody. Gabby Marshall knocks down threes. Kate Martin, her leadership out there is absolutely unbelievable. And Hannah Stalky didn't let their center have a single O board. Um, that's hard to do. That's really hard to do. So I'm, I'm proud of my group. Thank you. We'll start with taking questions for the student athletes. Row two right here. Hi, everyone. Howard Magdal at the Natch. Congratulations on the win. Uh, Caitlin, one for you, and Sid, one for you, if I could. Uh, Caitlin, it's 48-35 at halftime. You guys come out. It's 6-0 run to kind of step on the gas. How conscious were you of making that the moment that you wanted to kind of put this out of reach? Yeah, that's what we talked about in the locker room at halftime is like really come out and dominate that third quarter from the start, and that's exactly what we did. We forced them to use a timeout, and I thought we just really controlled the game once we got that lead. We were able to sustain it even when they went on a few runs. We were able to switch up our player defense, our zone defense. Um, I thought that caused them a few problems. Um, but overall, I just thought we executed offensively, whether it was in zone, whether it was in man-to-man, -man, whether it was in transition, and then uh, we did a great job on defense. Just a complete basketball game is what it felt like. And so just from, from your perspective, as, as one of the uh, end one on that play, you know, how much easier does Caitlin make things, getting the ball to you in rhythm like that? You know, it seemed like her assists today weren't just leading to scores, but it was just at, at every point precision where they needed to be. Yeah, I think we get reps like that all the time in practice. And, you know, Caitlin's the best passer in college basketball, and that's what we like to do. We like to get out and run. And she always finds us in transition, so. Uh, Doug Feinberg, the AP. Kayla, I know you had about four minutes to process winning, but <laughs> thinking about what's ahead now, you get a chance to play LSU again. Mm -hmm. It's not for the same level of mm -hmm. importance, but still obviously a chance to get back to the Final Four. No. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to get a chance to play them again? Yeah, I think we're excited. I think, you know, anytime you have a chance to go up against somebody you, you lost to, it brings a little more energy, but 
at this point in the tournament, every single team is good, whether you're playing West Virginia, whether you're playing Colorado, whether you're playing LSU, you prep the exact same way. You come in with the same exact mindset. And I think overall it's just going to be a really great game for women's basketball. And they're really solid one through five. We know we're going to have to rebound the basketball. Um, but obviously I don't know the ins and outs of everything about them because we haven't gone through the scout yet. Um, but more than anything, I think just building off this win today, I think – this was the first time in about three games we were able to put together what felt like a complete basketball game on both ends of the floor, whether it was in transition um, or on defense or just really executing our offense. So I think being able to build off of that and take that momentum into um, our next game. Kaylin, uh, Chad Lice to go Des Moines Register. Um, give me a sense of your mindset coming into the game. It, it looked from my perspective, our perspective, you really want to get everyone involved. The mm -hmm. passes were there, but you also wanted to drive to the, to the bucket to get twos. Yeah. Was that kind of – what were you thinking before the game of how you could be, produce the best? Yeah, I knew they were going to give me really good ball pressure coming into this game. And honestly, when we set our first couple of ball screens, they were playing drop coverage, just kind of their big was just staying in the paint. So I knew either Hannah was going to be open on the roll or I was going to be able to get pretty easy layups. And, you know, that's kind of what they went with, more just chasing me off of all the screens and, and giving, me up, giving up drives. And – Luckily, I was able, I think I only missed one two-point shot tonight. Obviously, I didn't shoot it as great from three, but um, I thought my penetration to the basket was really good. Um, I think that also led to quite a few of my assists, too, because it, it made them pick and choose exactly what they wanted to do. But when we're able to get stops on defense, that's where you know I really thrive in the transition game. And I think Sid runs the floor really well. Hannah runs the floor really well. And um, those are tough passes to catch and handle and, you know, finish more than anything so I'm just proud of them you know you don't get an assist if your teammate doesn't make the basket and then obviously the way Gab shot the ball tonight 80 percent from three and um it's it seemed like she came up with some very timely threes right when you know we maybe had a couple turnovers Gabby was always right there to find an answer for us Nancy Armour USA Today Sports Caitlin this oh, way. Sorry. <laughs> sorry if you've already been asked this but you've talked before about playing in the spotlight and how you kind of thrive on that. What is it like when you come into a game like tonight? I mean, the crowd was, it was a packed arena again. Mm -hmm. uh, crowd was wild. Obviously there was a, you know, matchup looming that everybody has been waiting for. What, what does that do to your mindset? Honestly, I think when I step on the court, like a calming sense comes over me. Like this is where I'm supposed to be. I have, you know, 13 amazing teammates that have my back and, you know, these are the moments you've worked so hard for. This is what you've put your, you know, the time in for in the gym all by yourself and with your teammates. And um, I guess it's just kind of like go let your work shine, go have fun, go have a blast. And whether win or lose, there's a lot to, you know, hold your head high about. And um, I thought that's exactly what we did. Everybody kind of just played with a smile on their face and had a lot of fun. And I, was, I speak for everybody on our team. We're not coming into this. We did not come into this game knowing LSU had won, and we're like, oh, we want to win to play LSU. We came into this game like, no, we're focused on this game. We're focused on beating Colorado because Colorado is a really good basketball team. In my eyes, they've played in one of the best conferences in the country in the Pac-12 all year long. They've gone up against really great competition, um, and I thought we defended really, really well. Um, so I think that's just the biggest thing is I came in with a sense of, you know, a calming presence and knowing – I have people that have my back, and this is a game that I've put a lot of time into, and I'm only promised, you know, 40 more minutes, so um, might as well go win it. Claire Hanna with TSN. First of all, congratulations on making it to the Elite Eight. I'll direct this one at you, Caitlin. Um, obviously, the goal is to win a national championship, but it's one game at a time. How often do you think back to that national championship game last year, and what comes to mind from it with LSU? Oh gosh, honestly, not that much. Ever since this seed season started, like my focus is like one and zero every single time we take the court, and I think that's exactly what Coach Bluter preaches. It's like I'm not caught up in the past, I'm not caught up in the future. I try to keep my feet right in the present and be where my feet are, and you know, prepare one game at a time. And I think I wouldn't be able to be the player I am if I was too worried about what has happened or what is going to happen. And yeah, you can learn um, from everything, but to be honest, the run we went on last year, like it goes so fast and it kind of is a blur at this point. I almost remember everything in between the basketball games better than the actual basketball games. And um, I think the biggest thing to take away from that is, you know, everything comes down to one possession. I think that's what our group learned from that journey is we played in a lot of really tight, close games um, and being able to execute down the stretch is really important. And I don't know. I think I think that's the biggest thing. I'm sorry, my memory is not very great, but <laughs> that's all I got. Uh, Marissa Jack, Spectrum News. This is for Gabby and Caitlin. Obviously, you guys go out there. You don't have necessarily the biggest 
uh, team on the floor. You saw some size in Colorado. You're going to see some size in LSU, but you all don't seem to really need that. Can you talk about what you do as a team to play to your strengths, to use that speed, and to show off the ball movement that you ladies can have? Yeah, I think you kind of have to pick and choose with our team. Obviously, there's a lot of attention on Caitlin, and she's going to get one or two people who all have to look at her throughout the whole possession. So I think that that leaves other people open. And you know, I think she does a great job of finding her teammates, finding who's open, reading the defense before the defense even does what they're going to do. And I think that truly speaks to what we try to do. We, we pass up good shots for great shots. We really pride ourselves in our assists. And I think we're kind of just hard to guard because you have to pick and choose. If you're going to stay in on Hannah, the shooters are going to be wide open. And um, I think that's kind of what you saw tonight. It's just like a complete basketball game and um, 20 assists. I mean, that's, that's Iowa basketball for you right there. Brian Howell from the Boulder Daily Camera. This is for Sydney. Um, Gabby, you can comment as well. But um, how important was it to get you and Kate and others involved early in this game to kind of set the tone that this was going to be a team effort tonight? Sydney, go first. Thank you. Then Gabby. Yeah, I mean, we always preach that there's five players on the court and everyone on the bench. And, you know, no one's more important than anyone else in our circle. And when we go out there, we know that um, – they're going to have a lot of their eyes on Caitlin, and that's going to leave us open. So we're confident in each other to knock down those shots, and that's what we're going to do. In a minute. I think she said it perfectly. I mean, it just makes us harder to guard. Um, if we move the ball like we did tonight, I mean, it makes the defense work even harder. And I don't know, it just things open up when you're hitting shots from the outside, and there's balanced scoring. And so I think it kind of makes Caitlin's job a little easier when we're all hitting shots, and we can help provide that, some of that offensive threat. Erica El Ayala with CBS Sports. Gabby, speaking of hitting shots, I mean, you did a pretty good job today. Um, what do you think was working offensively, and, and what did you see um, that, was, that was kind of given to you by the defense to, to get you in the position to make those shots? Yeah, you know, I think when they went into that zone, it kind of opened up like more and more passes and like they were pretty spread out and they had to worry about Caitlin up at the top. And so I think that kind of gave me more uh, room to shoot it. And I mean, we it led to pretty much, I don't know, a lot of open looks at the three. And so I think just being having my feet set, being ready to shoot, it's kind of what, what I did out there when they switched to that zone. Last one is here. OK. Go ahead, and then the last one here. Go ahead. Uh, Pete Doherty, Albany Times Union. For any of the players, I mean, this isn't uh, Carver Hawkeye Arena, but it seems like you definitely had a home crowd here. How, how did it feel out there? Did you feel like you, the uh, crowd was in your favor? Go ahead. I mean, yeah. I, when you look around, you see a bunch of Hawk fans, a bunch of black and gold, and it was loud. It was loud in there, and I think that's kind of what we're used to. And um, we, we, love the, we love those environments. I mean, we love when it's wild, crazy, energetic, mm -hmm. and it, we kind of feed off of it, and it gives us momentum. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Last one. Go right here. Yep. Kareem Copeland, Washington Post. Uh, this is for you, Gabby. Uh, you know, this last year of work has all been about getting to Cleveland, getting to the Final Four. Now that you guys are 40 minutes away, what is that feeling? Yeah, I think it's exciting. Um, obviously, we're going to have the same mentality every single game. It's been one game at a time, and it's going to continue to be that way. And we're going to prep the same way for LSU as we have all year. Um, and I think, you know, we're focused on this next game. We're not going to get too far, too ahead of ourselves. Obviously, that is the goal. But I mean, we're just going to focus on this next 40 minutes, and I mean, know the coaches are going to have us prepared and just play play Iowa basketball. Thank you to the student athletes for your time, and congrats again. Now we'll take questions for Coach. Start here in the second row. Hi, Lisa. Howard Mandel with the next. You know, obviously the offense is uh, pretty much exactly where you'd want it to be. You held Colorado to 37% uh, shooting, you know, uh, below 30 from three, and a lot of that came late uh, as well. What is the state of your defense, and what were you guys doing defensively so effectively tonight? You know, I thought our three-point defense was really good, and uh, we didn't want to let them get it on a roll in the three-pointers. And then, you know, I know they still got 16 offensive rebounds, uh, better than the 21 we gave up last year, uh, but they only got four in the second half, so we did a better job boxing out in the second half. Um, 
You know, I think Gabby is, is such a good defensive player, and people don't give her enough credit for that. There are games that she'll not score a single point for us and just come up with key play after key play. Um, I thought that we were physical. I thought that we did a really good job communicating on defense tonight. Hey, Coach, Doug Feinberg, the AP. The start you guys had, I mean, it seemed you threw the first punch, and they didn't really ever recover from that to make it really that competitive. How big was it to get off to a good start tonight against Colorado? I thought it was great. Um, it didn't feel like it was when you said it wasn't competitive. It felt like it to me it was. Um, but I thought we came out the third quarter, too, and really had that punch to begin that third quarter. I think we had three straight stops that turned into pushes for us. Um, I think we set the tone early in both of the, both of the halves. Um, I think it was really important. Go ahead. Lisa. Lisa, Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Um, I know you probably aren't caught up in this. I mean, you're looking at the game, Iowa versus LSU, but this is the game that everybody's wanted since last April. How big of a deal is this for women's basketball? And, and how fun is it to be a part of, you know, something that's really kind of changed the narrative of the game? Yeah, I think everybody's pretty excited for it. I mean, 12 million people tuned in last year to see this game. Um, might be the same. This time, who knows? Um, I know I know that these are two really good basketball teams, and it's almost unfortunate they're meeting this early. Um, but you know, everybody that's left now is really good, and uh, LSU is certainly that. Um, it's you know, again, I I haven't looked at our scout yet. I haven't gotten ready for that, but I just know it's going to be highly emotional and highly competitive. How you doing, Coach? Sheree Nicole, Essence Magazine. Um, just wanted to piggyback off of your last comment, actually. Um, and, and I know you all are saying, you know, one game at a time. You don't, you don't want to live in the past. Um, as a former athlete, though, I can only imagine competitiveness is what it is. Um, and with that said, you know, your last matchup with LSU last year was a lot of, there was a lot of things happening um, on the court and off the court, meaning a lot of press, a lot of social media attention. There's energy behind that. And I can already feel the energy and the momentum building up, even with the fanfare here today. How do you temper that with your team? How do you keep them focused as well as keep them competitive and really ready and excited to possibly avenge what happened last year? Yeah, we got run out of the gym last year. So, um, you know, it was, it was pretty bad. Um, but, you know, honestly, we try to keep the – Blind, you know, just keep looking straight ahead and not listen to the outside noise. And I think my team has done a good job of staying off social media, um, trying not to get caught up in that. I think when you get caught up in all that, now it takes your energy off the focus that you need at hand, and that is to prepare for a really good LSU team. Nothing else matters. Nothing matters that happened last year. Um, nothing matters except for being ready to play this really good LSU team. And, um, you know, I, I just don't think my players are going to get caught up in listening to outside voices. They haven't all year. Um, they've handled it all year, and I think that they'll continue to do so. Hi, Drew Wemple from Troy Records, Saratoga, you know, the Capital Region. Um, when you're coming into a new arena and a new community this week, and you see the, the fans that are here today, I know a lot of them were the home faithful, but – does it ever catch you by surprise to see how many people come out to watch and experience this, this team? Do you mean Hawkeye fans specifically or anybody? Anybody. Anybody. Um, quite honestly, everywhere we go, the average attendance increases a lot because people want to see Caitlin Clark play. And so right away, I mean, she's a magnet for fans. And wherever we go, it is the highest crowd that they have all year long. So it doesn't surprise me at all. Um, what does surprise me is many Hawk fans that are here because I, what I had heard before this was announced that it was already sold out and that, you know, we weren't going to get many tickets and all that. So to see so much black and gold here, uh, I'm really, they must have worked really hard to get their tickets. And um, so, again, Hawks fans are absolutely incredible. Uh, Mike Haloss, Cedar Rapids Gazette. Lisa, Caitlin got her second personal with six minutes left in the second quarter. You, you don't take her out. Uh, I, I've seen players taken out automatically for that time after time after time. Uh, why didn't you? And obviously it was a good thing you didn't. You know, I thought the two fouls she got were kind of touch fouls. They weren't like, I don't know, they were just kind of like, eh, that, that, that could have been called, maybe not called. Um, to me, you know, she's so smart. 
Um, I just talked to her a little bit, just said, hey, be careful, you got two. I, I, you know, we, we put her out at the end, we were taking her out for defensive possessions, but she is one smart basketball player and I have, and I really trust her. We also went to some zone to try to protect a little bit too. Right up here, second row. Go ahead. No, nope, nope, okay. <laughs> One more, go ahead. So not asking about, you know, you haven't done your scout on LSU yet, obviously, but given that you have such a tight turnaround to get there and it's such a big game, what goes into, you know, having such a short turnaround and coming up with, hopefully, the, the kind of game plan that gets you into the Final Four? Well, you don't wait till tonight to do it. You know, honestly, we've been working on, you know, I have different coaches assigned to different teams, and I have somebody assigned to LSU. And when I go back to the hotel, they'll have a scout ready for me to look at, and then we'll all sit down as a staff and try to figure out a game plan. Um, but you don't wait till now. I mean, you've got to do your homework ahead of time. And believe me, there was a lot of wasted paper and, and hours on UCLA and some other people. But that's the way it is this time of year. You have to be ready for everybody. Thank you, Coach. Congrats Thank on you. the win. Thank you. Colorado will be here soon.
Welcome back, everyone. We're joined by Colorado with Coach G.R. Payne and student athletes Quay Miller and Jalen Sherrod, and we will open it up with comments from the coach. Yeah, I would just like to start by saying um, how unbelievably proud of our team uh, that I am for the season that we had and for the women that they are and for the leaders that they are and the way that they contribute not only to our basketball program, but to our community and honestly every single person that they come into contact with. They're incredible young women. I'm so proud to be their coach, um, proud of, of everything that they've accomplished on and off the court. And as I told them, uh, it was an incredible season that was not defined by this one game. Uh, so really proud of, of, our, of the season that we had and excited to see what some of these seniors are going are gonna to do and excited for where our program is headed. Now we'll open it up for questions for the student athletes, row two. Brian Howell from the Bowl Day of the Camera. For both of you, uh, this is probably never a good feeling, no matter what round it is, but to have it come here and be your last game and have it uh, be such a you know, dominating effort by Iowa, how tough was that just to kind of deal with all those different things? Um, I mean, oh, um, yeah, I mean, it is tough. You never want to go out like that, but um, it, it was some things that, I mean, we can all look back at it now and say it was some things we could have done better. But um, at the end of the day, I'm proud of this team, proud of how we came out. Um, no quit whatsoever in this ball club. And um, yeah, I mean, it's always things to be, you know, critical of after a loss, but it is what it is. <coughs> Wait. Do you want to yeah. Yeah. How do you feel? No. Okay. Oh, no. Go ahead. Uh, Billy Witz with the New York Times. Uh, Jalen, trying to defend Caitlin Clark, what was, uh, I don't know, now, now that you've gone through it and like game speed and everything, what stands out to you about um, the difficulty in uh, defending her? Um, I mean, she can shoot it from anywhere on the floor. So uh, it's kind of just like, you know, pick your, pick your poison almost. Um, but I mean, she averages what? 31? Yeah, she had 29, so that's two less than her average. So, man, we locked her up. <laughs> In the back over here. Coming. Hi, uh, Jalen. Uh, Mark Singleace from the Albany Times Union. Well, she, well, she had 29. She also had 15 assists. How much harder does it make when she's getting her teammates involved the way she was uh, tonight? Yeah, I mean, that's the part that I would say is the, is the you know, hard piece is that she got everybody else involved. Um, so, I mean, it just speaks to the type of player she is. You know, she's unselfish and she got everybody else going. Um, and I think, as I mean, they had four players in double figures, so five um yeah so uh, that's just tough when everybody else is hitting too i can't i can't go ahead just uh to piggyback off that for quay um you know when they they got some other players involved very early in this game kind of set the tone for them <coughs> um how much more difficult does that make it um when they got everybody kind of rolling like that yeah like jalen said it's just difficult when you have like a player like caitlin um facilitating and um getting hers it's just you got to take away one or the other. Okay. Go ahead. Deshaun from NV Online, and this is for the student athletes. The coach said that this game shouldn't define your season. So I'll let you two have the floor. If you could share one of the most memorable moments of your season, whether it be on the basketball court or off the basketball court. We'll start with Quay and then Jalen. <laughs> Go ahead, Vito. Most memorable. I don't know because I have bad memory, <laughs> but as I just like go back and think about the season, I don't know, like I enjoyed all of our moments just because like now that it's over, it's like, damn, I want to go back to that moment or even that argument or that misconnect, disconnect. Um, yeah, I just enjoy playing for CU. Um. For me, I think it'll be the moment that my teammates, you know, called me up to the standard and told me to 
realize that my energy impacts them no matter what. Um, it really helped me be a leader and helped me understand that I have to always kind of adjust and be in the right headspace because my teammates need me at all times. Thank you, student athletes. Okay, we'll get one more in. Go ahead. I just want to ask both of you as you have now played your last college game, just kind of your thoughts on, obviously you want to get further than this, but the fact that you guys helped this team get back to Sweet 16s two years in a row. Um, if Quay and Jalen can both comment on, you know, if you've had really any time to reflect on you know, how awesome the last two years have been. I got it. I got it. Um, I think for me, realizing that I came here and they took a chance on me and I took a chance on them. Um, really means a lot. Um, you know, being told your whole life you're too small, um, you can't play on this level, you're not good enough. Um, and just coming out here, like at the end of the day, yeah, we lost, but nobody can take away these past five years from me. Um, nobody can take away what I've done, um, what this team has done. Um, and you know, you, I mean, it sucks at the end of the day, but nobody can take take this away from me. Um, regardless of the criticism you get after this game or throughout the season, um, yeah, I just think that, yeah. Thank you, Jalen. Thank you, Quay. Thank you. Now we'll take questions for Coach. Right here? Yeah. Hey, Coach. Doug Feinberg, the AP. How tough is Caitlin to sort of scheme for? Because she's such a good scorer and, and he's such a good passer that, like, it's sort of pick your poison, I'm guessing, which one you want to focus on more. Yeah, that you hit the nail on the head, and Jalen said it too. It's one thing to guard a great scorer. It's another thing to guard you know, the, the leading assist getter in America as well. And so um, that's, I think, uh, what makes her so deadly is, is not just the scoring, which in and of itself is pretty incredible, um, but it's the ability to, you know, if you can still stunt that or stilt that a little bit, she's going to find the person that's open. Yep, go ahead, second. Hey, Coach T. Baker with the next. Ooh. Uh, Jalen mentioned, you know, just the, what these five years have meant to her, and, and I'm just curious if you could say what they've meant to you and, and kind of how she's transformed the program in her time here, both on and off the court. Yeah, see, I was up here to hold their hand while they were crying, and then they left me. Um, yeah, there really are no words um, to describe. <laughs> Thanks, Jaxie. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there are no words really to describe the, the impact um, that Jalen Quay, Maddie, Charlotte, Sophie, all of our seniors have had on this program. Um, and, and the coolest thing about it, I was saying to Jay and Quay, is just, you know, a lot of people talk about family in their programs and, and, and sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't, but these guys are family forever. You know, when in 20 years when they're going through something, you know, we'll be the first ones that they call, you know, for support. And when I'm going through something, you know, 10 years from now, they'll be the first ones that I call. And that relationship is, is what makes what we do so special. The basketball is just the fun part, you know, but, but the things that, that we have last forever. And, and I know I have no words to, to describe exactly what that means. In the back. Uh, Mark Singleace from the Albany Times Union, Jr. Hi. Um, you start the season with a great win over, start the year with a great win over LSU, ended with a loss to Iowa. I mean, obviously you'd rather be playing on Monday, but do you take some interest in that game Monday and what it kind of means to women's basketball to have a matchup of the, that, you know, the national championship game with the anticipation? Oh, that? sure, yeah. I think everybody, you know, that loves the game of basketball will be tuned into that matchup. I think it'll be a great game. Uh, two of the best teams, you know, in the country, excited that we got a chance to play both. Um, this year because I also think we're one of the best teams in the country um, and so yeah we'll be tuned in you know we won't necessarily care who wins um, but we'll be excited for a great game 
Hey, Coach. Isabel Rodriguez with the next. Um, I know the game maybe obviously didn't go the way that you wanted it to, but could you just reflect on what it means to be playing your last game in the Pac-12 and what that conference has meant to you over the years? Yeah, yeah. The Pac-12 has been everything to a lot of us. Um, you know, it's had the moniker, the champ Conference of Champions for many years, and I think it's the perfect name, you know, for such a great conference where there have been so many champions in so many sports. So um, we're really sad that it's over. Um, you know, I know Oregon State will will keep, you know, carrying the torch for hopefully another couple rounds. Um, we'll be cheering for them all the way. Um, but yeah, really, really sad that it's over, but um, proud of everything that we've accomplished as a conference and proud to have been a member for so long. And uh, we'll be excited to, you know, to dive into the Big 12 pretty soon. Hey, Coach, uh, maybe the NC State game was the only one that you guys were out of, yeah. you know? And so did it feel helpless at all as a coach mm -hmm. today yeah. when they're down 20, 25? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, helpless might be the right word, only because we were trying so many different things and nothing really seemed to stem the, the tide. Um, but I, I mean, as, as we all saw, like we, our team is built on, you know, toughness and grit and never quit and never stop. We competed, you know, the whole night. But, um, but yeah, just we, they were just better than us today. You know, I think we're a really great team. I think we could have won. We believed that we would win the game, um, but they were better than us today. Coach, thank you, and thanks, Jax, for joining us. Thank you. Sunday, we resume our press conference schedules with the uh, Game 1 winner at 8.55 a.m. with the head coach, followed by the players. At 9.15, Game 2's winner at 10.10 and 10.30 with the student athletes on Sunday. Thank you, media, for your excellent coverage throughout the tournament, and we will see you tomorrow morning. Hmm? We're getting a lot of other people involved, that's all. Yeah.